Hi guys, this is an introduction to the video series for Grade 12 Learners Physical Science and this is the CAP Syllabus. Um, so what you can expect in this video is just an introduction to the tutor or myself uh, about who I am and uh, my experiences. We'll speak about an introduction to Grade 12 Physics, why physics is important, some of the real world applications, uh, tips on how to study physics, some resources and then uh, what sort of routine you can have to get that A in physics that we, we all want. So a bit about myself, my name is Mahesh. I'm studying electrical and computer engineering at UCT. Um, a bit about my background, I, start, uh, I completed matric a few years ago. I got 89% in physical science. Um, I've tutored subjects before, I've tutored uh, maths, um, electrical engineering and computer science at a university level, so I have a bit of experience. Uh, we'll move on now to some of the content we can expect. Um, so we understand that physics is broken down, or physical science is broken down, into two parts of the physics, the mechanics, which is your paper one, and you have paper two, which is your chemistry. So these are the subjects, matters that you need to know, or the content that you need to know for your paper one. So you, you should be familiar with Newton's laws. Uh, you have, should have done a bit of that in grade 11, and that carries over. So please keep, I hope you've kept your notes, because you, you'll need that. Uh, then we're going to speak about momentum and impulse, some projectile motion, um, a little bit of what work, energy power, electrostatic and electro electrodynamics. This involves magnets and your circuits, uh, Ohm's law, and so some of that you might be familiar with. Then we also go to optical phenomena and properties of material. We are paper two, uh, the chemistry is uh, part of physical science. There's a bit more content, there's a bit more learning, uh, less maths. Uh, some people like that, some, some don't. Uh, but there's, there's still some carryover from grade 10 and 11, your chemical change and your, uh, your aspects, your quantitative as aspects of chemical change. Then you'll work, uh, uh, learn more about the forces between molecules, those are intermolecular forces. Um, then there's a big section on organic molecules, which is, is quite big. Then there's energy and change, rate of and extent of reaction. Um, then uh, chemical equilibrium, acids and bases, a very big section, you know, about the pH scale and so forth then some electrochemical uh, reactions and just a bit of application in the, in the industry for, for chemists and chemistry. So just a bit about physics and why it's actually important. You might know this already, but um, there's just some, some physics is used throughout the world. Um, an example, a simple example is in seat belts. So I don't know if you've heard of the principle of inertia yet, uh, but you will if you haven't. Um, inertia is the resistance of a body to change. So, you know, if you pull a seatbelt slowly, it works, but if you pull it fast, it, it stops. That's basically the principle of inertia. It's, it's, it's to stop the change in motion. Um, steam iron, you, you, you're converting electrical energy into, into steam. That's a bit of thermodynamics, which is another part of physics that you do in university. You won't really do so much of it now. Um, anything from driving to walking to running uh, to just moving anything in general involves friction. Without friction, we wouldn't be able to move things in general. Um, you, you should already know about gravity. Um, that's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that we all know uh, inertly, even if you haven't learnt about it in physics. Uh, but something that you might not know that uses gravity is pen. Um, what happens is, as the pen moves across the paper, uh, the ball inside turns and gravity forces the ink downwards onto the ball. That's why it's called a ballpoint pen. Um, so also you might notice that when you write on, on, on the wall, or if you're writing upwards, then the pen stops working. It's because gravity is working in the opposite direction. Um, as an engineering student, I've seen tons of applications of, of, of physics, uh, physical science. Um, um, the, the chemistry side really, really kicks in, especially in, in terms of your semiconductors, electronics, uh, electrons, uh, flow of current and so forth. There's, just, there's a lot of applications in industry for physical science. It's very important, especially if you want to do anything in university um, in terms of, the, of, of engineering and even in, in, it looks in, in actuarial science and physics, maths. Uh, the, just the thinking process behind physical science is, is what's needed. Okay, so here's just some study tips on how to study for your paper one and your paper two. So you should know by now that your paper one is your mechanics or your physics. A lot of the times in these papers, there's more maths and diagrams involved. So you need to know your maths pretty well, especially your algebra and um, your geometry. 
because these will be used quite often, especially in drawing of diagrams and solving problems. Uh, it's important to learn definitions and laws, um, but you should also know how to apply them and understand them, uh, because that's basically the whole physics paper. It's just you learn a few laws, and these laws are tested in different ways to, under to test your understanding of them. Um, and you should also know the formulas as well as the units for formulas. Um, and especially knowing the difference between a vector and a scalar, all of these things that you learned from previous years carry over to this to this grade 12 year. It's, it's a build up. So you just have to understand the application of these laws and then just practice a lot, a lot of examples. Your know, chemistry is uh, your paper too. Um, there's a lot more content. You learn a lot more. There's not as much maths involved, but you have to know all your rules. You have to know the different types of structures and you have to know how to apply the content or the rules that you learned to uh, questions that are asked. And then you just practice a whole lot of examples. Um, so some of the additional resources that I can recommend is just to go on to uh, check the past papers on, 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 on the government websites. There's a lot of a lot of resources available. I would highly, highly recommend Eastern Cape and Western Cape papers. A lot of the time, these provincial papers that are available, if you can get access to them, do them. Because the people who set the provincial papers often end up setting the national papers. And um, you might find that a question might be taken exactly from a, from a provincial paper and just pasted into the final exam. So it's very important to do, the, to do those. And then find, there's a lot of study guides or guides or books full of past papers with the solutions in the back. So it's very important to do these because a lot of the time questions are reused and it can also really help your understanding. And what I recommend and that, that's really worked for me is to do a bunch of questions and then mark them yourself to understand where you went wrong. And then you can see, highlight it, make a note of where you went wrong so that you won't go wrong again, you won't make that mistake again. Um, so how whatever I said or whatever I will say in these videos is what I have done. Um, to get my marks and, and what I recommend. So it's been tried and tested. I've heard a lot of this from, from friends and colleagues. So it's, it's very important to do your homework daily and when you get stuck is to go to a teacher so that it doesn't hinder your progress when, because the syllabus is going to continue moving if you, even if you don't understand what's going on. So it's important to, as soon as you get stuck, is to ask and find out what happened. And it's also important to go to your teacher or go to your tutor, whoever it is, with a point at which you are. So you don't go with the question, I don't know how to do the question, but show up to where you can do, and then you can figure out what's the problem. Uh, it's also important that you keep your study notes from each test and exam because it's just going to boil down. You need to know everything for the final exam, even your grade 11 work. So I hope you kept that. That's going to be very, very important. Um, something I also highly recommend is uh, when you're studying for your exam is to, is to go through sections, each section. And once you finish studying the theory, you know, you have the theory and then the practical and the examples. Once you've done the theory, is to go to multiple exam papers, maybe three exam papers, and go to that question too, whether it's probably a Newton's Laws, and then, and do different examples on that section. So once you finish that section, you, you know you can do exam level questions of that, because there's different types of, of levels of questions that are tested. So it's also important especially aiming for to get higher than 80 percent to look for difficult questions like that level five questions the ones that that are difficult not the routine ones obviously you need to know how to do the routine questions but to look for the outliers because those are the ones that are going to be difficult it's much easier to get from 70 percent to 80 percent than getting from 80 to 85 and 85 to 90 it gets increasingly more difficult if you put more time in so it's up to you to look for the difficult questions so yeah, that's it. That's what you can expect in this video series. Uh, we're going to go through all your sections and then there's some tips on how you can study. Um, all the best to you. Good luck.